Hey, everybody, this is Chris from CodePen. Let's take a look at exporting pens uh, uh, in a way that, a new way that you can export a pen and then like keep working on it with a build process that you can use locally and offline, which is really cool. Take a look at this pen. Uh, and if I, I'm logged in as myself here, I'm a pro member, of course, but this works whether you're pro or not. I can hit this export zip button uh, and it's going to make me a zip file and the zip file is going to be named what the pen is named and I can unzip it and take a look. Now, if I take a look in here, what am I going to get? I get uh, a, a SRC folder, which is kind of a industry standard kind of thing that stands for source, which is the original stuff that you had written. As a matter of fact, let me open this in a code editor so that you can kind of take a peek at what's um, what's in there, you know? So there's the source file. And in this case, it, the pen happened to be created at the HTML preprocessor pug and the CSS preprocessor stylus. Could have been SAS and Hamel or just HTML and could use Babel and, you know, all those choices that you can make on CodePen. Well, here's the original exact code that was written here. This is 100% exactly what this is. And the stylus is 100% exactly what this is. So that's like what was on CodePen saved when you exported. And then dist is the processed version of those two files. So you'll see, you know, kind of a complete document and the processed uh, CSS here. So if I were to open this, you know, one reason you might export is you're like, I don't know, you're about to give a presentation and you're not sure if you'll have Wi-Fi. So you export it quick so that you have this that will totally work offline. You know, this is exactly what this is in CodePen. It's just an offline backed up version of it. In fact, you might be using it for backup reasons or versioning reasons or to submit it to your teacher or who knows, you know. Uh, uh, <clears throat> so that's that. I mean, we've offered that forever on CodePen as exporting as a zip, but you probably noticed um, that other feature when I hit the export button down here. So if I hit export, I can kind of go back or refresh the page and you'll see these options. And one of them now says zip with build script as a pro feature. Now this UI might change a little bit, but there'll always be a button under export that offers you to export with a build script. Now this is a pro feature. Um, so I'm pro, so it will work for me, but it's the same kind of deal. I'll click export a zip and it's going to offer to give me that zip file. And it's the same kind of thing. Uh, you know, it's named what the pen is named and such. But if I open this up, you'll see that there's just more stuff in there. We've kind of configured this to be more powerful and more ready for different uses. Now, in, in this case, again, I'm going to open it. <clears throat> Whoa, things are falling behind me. I'm going to open it <clears throat> in the same way. I'm going to open it in a code editor so you can look at what's inside here. You'll recognize the source folder. Just a smidge different. Our goal here with this build script is that you can run like an offline code pen and continue working and processing your file. So we need to do a little bit more. Now, this index.pug file, it's still exactly what you wrote. But notice that there's no like doc type or you know, external resources and stuff in here. That's what the template is. You know, it'll have your external resources and classes you've added to the HTML element, kind of code pen specific features make their way into this. And then there's a, 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 a you know, a code comment that says, oh, this is where I want you to put that pug when it gets processed, you know, just behind the scenes stuff that you actually don't even really need to know. What you need to know in here is I'm, I'm going to open up a, a, a terminal window here. I just hit command back tick, opens a terminal, ha happens to be in VS Code. You don't have to use VS Code. You can use any terminal in the world on any operating system in the world, really. You do need to have NPM installed because that's the build process is going to use basically NPM scripts to run itself. So you're probably familiar with this. CodePen being a front-end place, you've probably heard of and used NPM. I have to NPM install here. Now it's going to run some stuff and get some stuff that's going to help us process this file if we need to and kind of keep working on it uh, if we want to. So it's going to NPM install and get some stuff that's necessary for Pug and Stylus and, and our build process. Even if we weren't using those, we need some stuff for the build process. So there it is. And now you'll see classic stuff like node modules and stuff. There's a git ignore file in here, which means if you were to throw it up on GitHub or in any Git system, it's not going to upload those zillion node modules and just some smart stuff like that. Now it's going to come with a package.json file. That's why the NPM install worked is because it was looking at this file and telling it what it needs. And this is always a place that you can come look at in, in projects that use NPM because there'll probably be some commands that you can run under the scripts block here. So NPM run build, NPM run serve, NPM run task, etc. So in this case, let's look at NPM run build. I can just type it, NPM run build. That's how you 
run an npm script and it's going to do some stuff notice it's going to run pug and run stylus and run a number of other things that are just part of this code pen build process that make it all work now it's it hasn't it won't even really do anything because there was already some files in the dist folder but what it's doing is processing all the files in the source file and putting them in the dist folder so if i open this up and you know make a new tab in my browser here uh, <clears throat> open the dist folder and put the index.html file in there. You're seeing the output. Now that was already there, but it did just freshly build them with this npm run build thing. Let me open up that pug file in source and change like the name here. Instead of Morgan Sweeney, let's say it's Morgan, you know, McCool Pants or whatever. And then hit save. And then I'll come down here and type npm run build again. It's going to build all those files and then refresh the page. This file will have changed and it's going to say Morgan McCool Pants. So that's what I mean. Like you can process CodePen offline with this system. Now to come and type npm run build every time is a little cumbersome. So that's why we have npm run serve, which is kind of has a file watcher in a local web server that will run and give you local a local host url that you can hit uh, and now it's kind of watching that pug file for changes so if instead of morgan mccool pants it was susan mcrad a lot or whatever and hit save uh, uh this it's going to run this process and it's going to update this without me even having to come over here and refresh the browser let me add a bunch of exclamation points one of my favorite ways to re-trigger a file save I'm just hitting Command S in my browser to save this file. And by the time I get over here, it's already added those exclamation points. The same thing will work for your stylus code here. This just happens to be in stylus, which is a CSS preprocessor. But if I said background color red instead of this more nice gradient back here, hit save. It's going to process the style sheet and inject that red color in that background as soon as I hit save, which is like how CodePen works. Although CodePen, you don't even have to hit save. It'll just detect your changes and do it. This is a, it's kind of like an offline CodePen. I'm able to keep working here offline or put this on GitHub or work with my coworkers on this and just have what I started on CodePen, but have it here instead, uh, which I think is a powerful feature. Now, let's say I've changed a whole bunch of stuff. It's kind of cool to uh, have this backup folder here, which is source and dist as well, but it's just like untouched. The build process doesn't touch those files. So in case you screw up or need to go back in time or look at the original of when it was exported, that's there for you too. Now, if you have any questions about how this works, again, there's a file that comes with the download that tells you what what's going on here, how to run stuff, how it all works. You can always reference that. It's not like you have to come back to this video uh, to check that out. So that's what export with a build process works like. You know, it's, a, it's kind of like an offline working local version of CodePen. So enjoy and let us know if you have any questions.